In this video, I want to discuss the best order flow platforms to use and the best tools that I personally use, such as a footprint chart, such as a heat map, and also a depth of market. I want to break it down. I do have in-depth videos in the Investor Trade course going over strategies, going over platforms and tools. But for the people that have been messaging me on my Instagram, this will be a good video so you understand what I personally use and what I personally recommend. For those watching this that don't follow me on my Instagram, I'm going to post the link in the description below to follow me on there. It's a really good resource. I answer all my questions, all my DMs, and I post really helpful and engaging daily tips, daily tricks, and stuff you're just not going to find anywhere else on the internet. Again, the link for my Instagram will be in the description below. But now let's get right into these tools. The first thing that I do want to say is all data that we see on a candlestick chart formulates because of order flow. Price changes because of the orders between buyers and sellers transacting in the market. So if you see a very strong uptrending market, or let's just say you see a very strong green candle, that tells me there are more aggressive market buyers than passive sellers and vice versa for a red candle or a downtrending market. So when you see a candlestick chart, which I still personally use, candlesticks represent where price is and where price was based off of the transactions that we see a forming inside of the market via order flow. So the first platform that I personally use and I personally recommend, and again, I wouldn't recommend or make a video on something if I don't use it. And I use this every single day, which is book map. Now there are pros and there are cons. I want to talk about the best features with book map. And in my honest opinion, the best feature with this is its replay feature. I have days and I have data going back the past year, year and a half that I can go back to this file and if I took a trade on let's just say July 17th of 2023, I can click that and replay that data like it's back in that day so I could see the trades that I took, the trades that I missed, I can replay the data so I know what happened and I can learn from it and build upon. And I can fast forward this replay, I can speed it up. I could slow it down. So again, I could go back, review, and see what worked really well and what really didn't work and how I could have traded it. Now, what we're gonna see on my screen here to the left is a heat map. Now, what this represents is level two data and completed volume transactions, which could also be seen on a normal time in sales and level two. As I talked about in my previous video, the market is derived from a level two, which is the order book, and a time in sales which shows completed transactions or receipts. So all order flow is gonna be the same, just different tools and different platforms will visually differ that information. What we see here on book map, which is a heat map, is a historical level two and time in sales data. The bubbles represent completed transactions which could also be seen on a time in sales, but this is more aggregated data. So if I were to zoom in on this data, I can hover over each bubble and a green bubble shows aggressive orders which hit the ask, which also are known as market buy orders or aggressive buyers. So if I were to zoom in on this bubble, and I could zoom out and zoom in and the, the, the quantity will change depending on the information that I'm zoomed into. So at this point, someone, if I look at that little toolbox right by that bubble, it says volume 262 at the bottom at 4412. So what that tells me is there was an aggressive buyer for over 262 lots or contracts, depending on how you call it, at 4412, which is the price of the S&P 500 futures at this time at 9.30 Eastern time. So it tells me the time it happened, it tells me the size, and it tells me the price, which is the same information we will see on the time and sales data. Every green bubble is an aggressive market buy, and every red bubble is an aggressive market sell order. We can differentiate between buy and sell off of this heat map. Depending on where price is currently trading at, I could actually make the heat map a little more visible. Everything above price, is going to be on the order book on the ask side or the offers which are passive sellers. Now this is a heat map and it will show historical and current data. What this means is we have a column called the current order book which is essentially just a level two. Everything on the current order book column which is red above price 
and green below price is level two data. Now, if I were to hover over this line right here, which is white at 4414, this white line right here, we can see that that toolbox where my cursor is, at the ask, there's 152 orders at 4414. Looking at the current board order book, we can see 4414, there's 152 lots offering to sell at that price. Looking back above it, now we see an orange line. The richer the colors, the more orders at that price. Now we see 207 lots at 4415. If we were to look at the current order book, we see 207 matches up at 4415. Now, this also why I love it so much is it shows historic data. Imagine we went to the bathroom for five minutes. We missed something that happened in the market. Well, guess what? I can go back and see exactly what happened at that time that I was away or not watching the market. I could see whether the level two data was, was added to, whether it was pulled. So in this example where my cursor is hovering over, there was once 225 lots at 4414. So someone's looking to sell 225 at 4414. A millisecond later, that person or those people pulled their order and now we see only 78 here where I'm hovering my cursor at 4414 and those level two, those passive sellers never got filled and never showed intention. Now zooming out, we could see the market kind of like with an x-ray vision. I like lowering that setting just a little bit and I could see all passive orders. I could show all completed transactions. I could see whether somebody pulled an order, whether somebody added an order historically and via current data. This is essentially the market's x-ray with full level two and time and sales data on one visual screen. And as you could tell, the candlestick chart to the right looks identical to the heat map because this will show us the orders behind the candlestick data. And I also have some profiles such as a regular trading hours volume profile, which it's just a custom column of a session volume profile. I have a chart range volume profile, so that will change as I zoom in. And then I have a session volume profile, which is the overnight session and the cash trading session. Now towards the bottom, we're going to see a cumulative volume Delta. Now Delta, in my opinion, is the most important order flow tool because it shows who is aggressive and who is not very aggressive. It shows where there's absorption and it shows where there is trapped buyers or trapped sellers. What Delta shows us is ask volume minus bid volume. So if there is more volume, which hit the ask, than there is the bid, we are going to have a positive Delta. That tells me there are more aggressive buyers than aggressive sellers. If there is a negative Delta or a red Delta, that tells me there are more aggressive sellers than buyers, which is going to bring me into my next tool, which is a depth of market. And this is also done on Bookmap, And this is also done on other platforms where we're going to see the same info just depending on what platform you use and what I'm going over will relate to no matter what tool or platform you use. Now on my depth of markets, what I personally like seeing, and again, I could really only speak for what I look for and how I trade. What I have here is a volume profile sell column and a volume profile buy column. This splits data where volume is transacted at that price, depending if it hit the bid or depending if it hit on the ask. So going back to the heat map, if I see the market rallying and I see tons of aggressive buying at 4415, well, if I were to look at this volume profile right here, at 4415, you could see there's 2,400 lots transacted at 4415 and 1,300 which hit the bid. And remember what I said about Delta. This volume profile Delta column is the difference between the ask volume minus the bid volume. So if we have more orders which hit the ask than hit the bid, we're going to have a positive delta. And in this case at 4415, our delta is positive of 1125 lots. So I like having a split profile between bid and ask. I like having a delta by price on my depth of market. And also on every single depth of market, you're going to have level two data. So you're going to have bid depth, which is this dark blue column. And you're going to have ask depth, which is this dark red column. This is the level two data, the same level two data that you're going to see on any charting platform on a depth of market. We're going to have this information, but instead of it being horizontally on a level two, 
We're going to have it vertically on a depth of market. We're also going to have recent bid trades and recent ask trades at that price. And then I also like having a session volume profile so I can see the distribution and the structure forming in the market via its profile and via the orders at that specific price. So this essentially is the same exact info that we see on a heat map, but we really don't have a visual picture. Instead, we just have a bunch of numbers. And in my opinion, the depth of market is the most important tool yet it's not the easiest to visually read. Because like I said, if I was in the bathroom five minutes ago, I might have missed key information that I can't see currently on the depth of market. Here now so you can see it better, this is a volume profile dif differentiating between bid and ask. This is a volume profile which splits data between the delta. This is a session volume profile. Obviously you're gonna have the price and then we're gonna have level two data and recent trades in the inside. The same exact info we could see on a, a active trader on let's just call it TOS. We could see this, but just less sophisticated and less data as thinkorswim does not sort bid versus ask data. So this is essentially what I use on Bookmap. It has majority of the tools that I use all on one screen and it's very beginner friendly and it's very, very easy to use, which is why I prefer to use Bookmap. And like I said, I could go here, I could fast forward this replay and I can show you all exactly what happened and trades that I took via its replay feature that I can even go back myself and review what I did right. And it just, it's just so accurate, it's so good, it's so clean and will definitely help speed up the learning curve. Now the next platform is not very beginner friendly, but in my opinion, it's the best platform. Uh, because of how customizable it is. I have custom indicators on here. I have custom settings. I have custom tools that I use personally that I would not be able to develop or get that data elsewhere. And this is Sierra Charts. It is very old school. It is very 2000s Windows XP vibes. And it's very difficult for a beginner trader to set up because you have to connect a live funded brokerage account even to get data. You have to customize all your tools and it's just very, very old school. In my opinion, it is the best tool to use, especially because I use a Delta footprint chart. So exactly what I went over before with how Delta works, this essentially is a footprint chart, which shows me the Delta by price. And it also puts it in a footprint so I could see what time this occurred at via almost like a candlestick uh, formation here. This is something that I customized. I did not really create myself. It was inspiration from another trader, but I figured it out. I coded it and studied it and customized it to how I visually want to see it myself. So what I see on my screen here is a Delta footprint chart, which shows me the Delta Remember, aggressive market buy minus aggressive market sell at that specific price. And it highlights anomalies or it highlights outliers in the data. Also on Sierra charts, we have a depth of market, which you can fully customize your colors, your rows, the speed, you could customize every little detail you want, but again, not very beginner friendly. You could also have normal candlestick charts and down on the bottom, we have a cumulative Delta. We have a candlestick chart, VWAP, volume profile, etc. So there are many different things you can do with this, but it's not beginner friendly at all. If you guys want more tutorials with Sierra charts, I could be happily to make them in the future. But as I said, tons of videos with actual live examples in the course, especially with the new order flow uh, section that I added a few months ago. And there are tons of other and different indicators that I could simply add to my charts. There are millions of them. You could play with it. You could get used to it. You could customize it and custom studies, ones that you code yourself. But going back to this Delta footprint chart, one example, and, and this is a trade that I actually took. I want to show you what I saw combining all the knowledge of the tools and platforms here. What we're going to see at 4415 is a very strong positive delta, whether it's a one buyer itself, whether it's multiple buyers. What we notice, if I were to just zoom into this chart, is at 4415, we're going to see a very significant level play out. I'm going to put a green line there. And where I'm hovering my cursor over here, we see a total volume of 2,000 lots, which is the middle of this footprint column. To the left of it is the delta, positive or negative, and it's color coordinated between blue of positive and red negative. So at this green line here, 4415, we see a positive delta of 749. A few minutes after, five minutes after, we see a positive delta of 951. 
A few minutes after, we see a positive delta of 917. And directly above this and directly below this, we also see large positive deltas. So this was the highest amount of volume transacted at this day so far. This was about 20 minutes into the market being open. And directly above and below that, we see a ton of buying in the market. So whether it's one buyer or multiple buyers, who knows and who cares? This just becomes a significant level that I'm watching in the market due to the activity that we're seeing via the order flow. If I were to pull up a normal candlestick chart, we really cannot see that data of that strong buying off of this chart. You know, in fact, we even see a lower high being put in, which some might view this as weak, despite all this strong action that we're seeing formulate on the order flow. Combine this with the market bouncing off of a demand zone. So what this tells me is now we have buyers factored in at a level of interest of demand, where once the supply and demand equation was favoring the buyer side, the market then rallied, formulated a new demand zone. So we have a bounce off of demand, we have a new demand zone forming, and now intraday off of the order flow, we're seeing all this positive delta form at this 4415 level. So this is what the heat map looks like at this moment. As you could tell, very large green bubble at 4415. The profile signifies that as well. Fast forward a few minutes later, some more buying at 4415. Few minutes thereafter, strong buying, strong buying, strong buying. So a heat map, now we're visually gonna see this a little bit better. And pulling up the depth of market, we can see a positive delta so far that day at 4415 of 2,600 lots. 4,200 hit the offer, 1,500 hit the bid, giving us a positive delta of 2,635 at 4415. So this might be a strong buyer factoring into the market. This is when I put in the intraday commentary tab in the Discord, I update my thoughts in real time every single day, along with pre-market plans of the levels I'm watching every single day. I said, if we can hold 4415 in the short term, this is a sign of strength, and what I said above can be further val validated, meaning if we hold 4415, a break above 4420 means it's gonna rally another 10, 20 points into the supply zone which was a target above. So now what I'm gonna do is replay the data on the heat map and I want you to see how the market responds to 4415 when it dips into this level. When the market comes into a level of interest, a lack of activity or a lack of volume usually signifies the market will reverse and head the other way to attract participants. What you're gonna see here is I'm gonna speed up the replay, the market dips down into 4415, there's a lack of activity, and immediately the market shoots back up with very, very strong buying volume, indicating the market hold, held this dip, indicating that buyers are defending it, which also indicates the market has a very, very good chance of continuing to rally higher off of that strong buying being defended to the upside. Now watch what happens here as the market sells off into 4415, this green line. There's a lack of activity. In fact, there is strong selling at that level. So now what that tells me is as the market sells off into 4415, someone's selling into it. And if somebody's selling into a level, that means somebody also has to be buying on the other side of the market passively, aka a bid. Then the market rallies and this rally on such low volume indicates the market had a very easy time bouncing and rallying off that indicating that the market should test higher prices. And as you could tell, a very, very clean bounce of 4415, simply using the order flow, indicating strong buyers factoring into the market. And I could fast forward this replay because the market just kept rallying very, very strong. Uh, and, the, and the development after this was so, so key to becoming a buyer in the market. And again, off a candlestick chart, other than it bouncing off demand, we really cannot see that information about the volume off of this chart alone because here was that dip down here was 4415 right down here and here was that aggressive rally off of that and the market had a really strong rally into our supply zone which we used as a target where we scaled out of our position because that's where we like to exit at these imbalances of supply and demand and that is the beauty of order flow the best platforms and the best tools that i use if you have any questions, comment them in the description below. I try to make this as simple as possible and as basic as possible. Again, there are more in-depth videos in the Invested Trade course. If you're not a member, I recommend checking it out. Also, I recommend following me on my Instagram and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. There also will be discount links for Bookmap 
and Sierra charts in the description below. But besides that, I'm going to end it. Peace.